Welcome back, loves. I'm Pajamas, that's Mr. Frog. We're gonna hop right back into this. Near Automata. I know priority. Should be. Go help Pascal. My filter is messing up already. There it goes. But I. Priority for me is taking this opportunity before something triggers and takes away my control of A2. I want to figure out what's going on with the backstory with Rose. This is my priority. Your hub Pearl Harbor Descent. No record part one. They hydrated. My name is Anemone, and I lead the Android Resistance. This is a record of the battles I've experienced and my losses. I leave it here as a warning to myself. The machine life form attacks lands attack lands far too close for comfort. I smell an acrid odor and know that some of my hair has been smooshed off. Anemone retreat for now, that's an order. That's my Captain Rose. I obey her without hesitation, running from the front as soon as I take out a few nearby enemies. Feet flying beneath me, I leap into the hastily built trench where my resistance comrades are gathered. How many battles is this now? Same sights and sounds, the same struggle of attrition. My resistance forces play the same war on repeat with no end in sight. I don't even remember why we're fighting anymore, but I must continue regardless. I must continue until one side or the other side is dead. This looks bad, Xion. What should we do? Calm down, Lily. We'll find an opening somewhere. Don't search for an opening, you make one. Dahlia, wait. Oh, it knows. Apologies. Lily, Dahlia, and Rose. Then an anemone. Interesting. I grabbed Dahlia's arm before she completed the trench and turned to Rose. She brought us here. After all, she must have some, have a plan of some kind. As the enemy horde closes in, Rose simply squints off in the distance. It's been a change in the enemy movements, she says finally. Someone just started fighting over there. That's not possible, stammers Margaret. We're all here. Margaret's right. There are only nine of us left capable of fighting the machines. Captain Rose. Rivera? Rivera? Lily, Sonia, Erica, Margaret, Shion, Dahlia, and me, Anemone. Well, it's left of the 8th Descent Forces, the one that took place roughly 200 years ago. An uneasy Sonia pulls Shion close and chews on a loose strand of hair. I don't like it, she says. What if it's some kind of machine trap? I wait for a while, heart pounding, until I hear the enemy fire less than... Okay, I say. This looks like a chance. Let's pull back. Someone's fighting out there, Anemone, cries Dahlia. We can't abandon them. Oh, so you want to risk all of our lives for some stranger? Come on. We don't even know if this mystery fighter is on our side or not. That's not what I said. Enough, you two, barks Shion. The captain makes the final decision on this. After Shion speaks... All of us turn to Captain Rose. She looks us in the eyes and nods slowly before starting to speak. Guevara, the enemy's heading towards the explosives we set up earlier, yes? Guevara thinks for a moment. Now that you mention it, yeah, they are. A slight smile crosses Rose's face, yet she still seems perfectly composed. Good. If this goes well, we might be able to take them all out. I want all of you to leave this trench and get those explosives, says Rose. We'll let the blast take out most of them and clean up the stragglers. Identifying our unknown mystery fighter can wait until we're done. No one objects to the captain's decision. The moment she issues the order, we all leap from the trench as one and re-enter the fray. When we reach the battle, we find what appears to be another set of androids dressed in strange black outfits. Before they even know what's happening, we detonate the explosives, killing the remaining machines, and turn our guns in their direction. Alright, 
I say to the stranger, start talking. Easy says one of the mystery androids, we're on your side. Our new models rolled out as part of something called Project Yorha. Really, I say, we haven't heard anything about new models. I probably speak with more bluster than necessary, but I have to make sure they're actually on our side. I don't think they're lying, necessarily. But I can't read their expressions thanks to the giant goggles they wear. Frankly, a little caution never goes amiss in the middle of a war. Learn the four androids refer to each other as number 2, number 4, number 16, and number 21. They also aren't in a hurry to share much more. A mission's top secret, one of them says, that's why you haven't heard about us yet. I slowly draw my knife and attempt to gauge the reaction. So in other words, no one will know any better if I kill you right now. Stand down, Anemone, says Rose softly. No, cries Lily, she's right. We've all seen how quickly the enemy is evolving. We say these four aren't machines that look just that just look human. My companion's not in agreement. Stan Warren has made us all suspicious. One of the strangers, number 16, I believe, draws a long knife from its sheath. If it's a fight you want, she says, I'm happy to give it to you. Before I can respond, Dolly leaps in front of me with her weapon at the ready. This is it, we're going to fight. But just before the battle can erupt, the android called number two steps forward. Wait, she says. It used to be 16 of us as number two, but the others died during the descent. We're isolated and alone out here. Reinforcements aren't coming, and that means we have to finish this mission with the soldiers we have left. We don't need more enemies right now. What we need is allies. She finishes the speech with a soft sigh, as if trying and failing to hold her emotions in check. I know that sort of voice. It's a voice of someone who still has hope despite all the odds. Oh, that took seven minutes. I think, um, yeah. I'm gonna stay with this. I understand if you don't want to stick around for this of the episode. I'll probably only make it about going through the logs if they take a while. Your help. Yorha Pearl Harbor Descent Personal Record Part 2. According to the Yorha team, there's an enemy server beneath Mount Kawa. If we could take it out, we might finally gain some ground in this endless war. But in order for that to happen, we need to work together. After a bit of thought, Rose decides to throw in with the new models. It's a relationship that changes as time goes on. But what are you doing, Dahlia? Just showing this idiot how weak she is, replies a winded Dahlia. Huh, wheezes her opponent, number 16. You're obviously outmatched. The two of them are taking turns hitting each other. It seems friendly enough as those things go. Plus, they've been doing it for so long now that both of them are out of energy, they likely could have punched through a piece of paper at this point. The rest of the group stares at the combatants and tries not to grin. Dolly at number 16 seem to butt heads over the smallest little things. Maybe it's because they're so much alike. It's almost annoying how quickly muscle heads learn to like one another. The rest of us converse as Dolly and 16 continue to spar. We call each other by names that I gave us, explains Rose. I see response number four. I thought it strange you didn't use code numbers. She nods while she speaks, as though this all makes perfect sense. Suddenly Captain Rose breaks out in a wide grin. You know what, she says? I think we should give all of you names as well. No, says number two. It would be a waste. Rose's eyes are warily. Er, a waste. You can name me when the mission's over, she replies, as a blush rises in her cheeks. I can tell her words also serve as a wish for success. Alright, responds Rose. I'll think of a name for you by then. She knows this is a fleeting promise, as most such things are, but it doesn't matter. Already, I can see us growing closer to the Yorha team. Well, my friends are growing closer to them, at least. 
You're all being careless, I state, much louder than I intend. Luckily, the others don't hear or decide to ignore it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not about to go against the captain's judgement. That doesn't mean I'm ready to just lie down and trust our new friends. Ours is a solitary existence that has long since been abandoned by the moon. No matter how they cried, mourned, or struggled, the voices of our departed comrades went unanswered. So how can you trust an entire squad of new models that you just met? What's wrong, Anemone? I hear Lily calling to me. She's likely concerned about me being apart from the rest of the group. Nothing, I begin. I'm fine. Before I can complete my thoughts, Lily suddenly opens her mouth and emits a terrible scream. Lily's scream echoes through the entire camp. It's heartbreak heartbreaking. It's agony. It's horrible. She's infected, screams Rose. Lily's infected. We all draw weapons out of instinct as much as anything else, pointing them at our comrade as she continues to scream and scream and scream. We all know what's happening. We've seen it before. It's a logic virus. The machine weapon that hijacks android systems and overrides their data. And since there's no known cure, it's also a death sentence. I need to show her mercy. I need to set her free. My finger rests on the trigger, yet I hesitate. Before I can make that final fateful decision, I hear a voice rise up from somewhere behind me. Stop. You can't do this. You can't just let our f let your friend die. It's number 21. The girl I thought to be cool and composed beyond all measure was now pleading with me to spare Lily's life. What do I do? What the hell do I do? Lily said you were like a family to her. You can't abandon family. Not before you exhaust every possibility. What can you do then? I'll use my power to erase the virus. That's impossible. Rose spat out without thinking, but before we can act, Lily starts to send nearby comrades flying with impossible strength. I've seen infected androids before. I know how much damage they can do once the virus turns off their limiters. They'll fight and fight until they're utterly destroyed. Dahlia and number 16 rush into the fray, trying to suppress their former friend, but she swats them away like flies. How many of us have been infected now? How many friends have I been forced to put down? Part I'm not supposed to have aches with the thought. It aches as I remember all the identification numbers that have been retired. When did I start giving them names? When did I decide I simply couldn't endure it any longer? Initiating reprogramming sequence. That voice, number 21. She's screaming something about reprogramming? I don't know what to do. I'm lost. As my vision slowly clears, I see number 21 inputting commands into her terminal, while number 2 and number 4 hold her down. They hold her as she rides, and Rose stares at me with surprise. Oh no. I'm holding Lily too. What he wants a scanner. <clears throat> Yorha, Pearl Harbor Descent, Personal Record Part 3. Fourteenth Machine War, Pearl Harbor Descent. The name of the mission entrusted to the Yorha soldiers. Was there ever such furious gunfire? Such bombings that continued without pause? Our target is a machine server under Mount Kala, and our situation is dire. We need reinforcements, requesting deployment at once. Number two speaks quickly, yet calmly, which is all the more remarkable considering the hostile army closing in on our position, but the command center and the orbiting satellite informs us no reinforcements will be forthcoming. We are abandoned. We are alone. It's so easy to do from up there, from the satellite, from the moon. I'll do whatever is necessary, says Lily with a grim smile. 
Dolly and Mari quickly nod in agreement, as does number 16. They decided to join the rear guard, staying behind to be our shield, even though it comes at the cost of their own lives. Regardless, they all agreed without hesitation. For we in the vanguard would be joining them in death soon enough. Without another word, we turn our backs on each other and take up positions. We know this is the end. Dolly and the others would buy us time to reach the gate at Kala's peak. They changed the spelling of Kala there. That's annoying. Beyond that lies an elevator, and beyond that is the server. If we can destroy it, we'll deal a devastating blow to machine life forms throughout the Pacific region. But as I notice number 21 scowling at the elevator, I start to have a bad feeling about the final stage of our mission. Go on, she says, I've got this. We crowd into the elevator as she begins hacking the terminal. She doesn't need to tell us what's happening. It's clear that the elevator won't descend all the way to the server unless someone stays behind to control it. Enemies incoming. They're almost on us. As I speak, I suddenly find myself leaping from the elevator and taking up a position at number 21's side. Almost as if my body is out of my control. Something is wrong. Something... I'll back up number 21, I cry. Rescue, take out that server. Doors close on my friends. The last thing I see is the face of my captain, Rose. She looks... concerned. But then the door is shut, and she is no more. That was the last time I ever saw them. But it's alright. I'm going to finish this one way or the other. The only sounds we hear are distant explosions and the rasp of number 21's breathing. Thank you, she whispers, for staying with me. I look at her eyes and see the telltale red of a logic virus infection. I was right, after all. I sigh softly as I draw my weapon. I've seen comrades infected before. That's why I couldn't leave her to die alone. The vaccine she gave Lily is already ineffective. The enemy has evolved. They studied number 21's patterns and developed a new resistance. No one can save her now. But when the elevator reaches the server, begins number 21 weakly. Then I'll give you peace, I reply. The elevator moves ever slower. The elevator moves ever lower, creating a countdown on number 21's life. How much time has passed? How much can possibly be left? Too long to wait, yet not long enough for regret. A massive explosion echoes in the distance as the hall slowly shakes. It's the final act of Lily and the others in the rear guard. They just overloaded their own fusion reactors. The sound of our comrade's demise slowly fades from our ears. As it does, number 21 reaches up and slowly removes her goggles. I'm glad I got to meet you, she says. Her eyes are so red, but not completely. There's a little of herself left. And while it is, don't worry, I say. I'll be with you soon. She smiles as my words reach her ears. As soon as the elevator touches down, I fire a bullet into num number 21's brain. I watch the thing that used to be her tumble to the ground. I stare at the gun I hold in my in trembling hands. I press it to my temple. This will end it all. The war. My meaningless existence. All of it. It will finally be over. Unforgivable. 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 Your comrades sacrifice themselves and fight to the last breath. They feel suffering, they feel sadness, they feel pain and terror. And yet you would surrender now. Unforgivable. The voice is a battlefield curse, telling those who survive to see their mission through no matter what. It is another me crying out. I scream at the top of my lungs and race down the hall. I'll show you. If you're going to push me, I'll show you. You'll only be satisfied if it ends with more killing. I leap into the fray with weapons in both hands. Here I am. Here I am. Kill me. 
As I scream, an explosion suddenly rises up and sweeps everything away. A soft wind touches my cheek. I smell fire. I smell ash. The explosion in the server room was powerful enough to take out Mount Kala, spelling's back, itself, reducing the once proud summit to a smoking crater. The machines immediately drop to the ground and stop moving. I look out over the scorched earth. Lily, number 16, Rose, number 2, are any of you? I'm the only one left. The only one. I was alive because I had been afraid to die. I begin to giggle. It's a mad thing, crazed, even to my own ears. I'll join you soon. You promised to join her soon. How could I have said such a vain, laughable words? Such lies. I laugh. I stand in the smoke, in the flame, and laugh until I think my very throat will tear itself in two. I blink. Daylight drifts through the smoke. I've been standing here all night. My laughter finally depleted, I force myself to my feet. I'm the coward who stayed behind, the coward who lived, and it's my job to carry on the will of those who fight at my side, who fought at my side. Since I can't kill myself, I have to fight until someone does it for me. I'll endure every hardship, I'll kill every machine I find. This is my cross to bear. I walk slowly into the west, dragging my, dragging my broken body along. Stay hydrated. finish some things up. <clears throat> There's more to this story, Anemone. There's more. How is A2 here? that does for an episode. It's not long, but I want to leave this here. We'll come back and we will head over to see what we can do to help out with Pascal. There's still more to this story. It's from- that's- That's the story from Anemone's perspective. And it cleared up a lot about A2, but there's still a lot missing. <sighs> Until next time, loves. You take care.